It was called Double Agent Jane, and it starred C movie actress Chesty Hawkins. But first, a little background on me and my mother. My mother was the sort of woman who could scream at you through clenched teeth, all without losing a smile. <laughs> what did I tell you? You get back to the shopping cart this instant, or I'm gonna knock your fucking teeth out! It's not understood! Don't make me call your father! <laughs> <laughs> We would bicker constantly when I was growing up. Clean your room. Why should I clean my room? The Finkelmans are coming over. Are they going in my room? Just clean your goddamn room. <laughs> Just shut up, Mom. Oh, Hitler, do you hear how he's talking to me? <laughs> I guess you finally won. <laughs> I learned how to push your buttons. And one of my favorite memories from when I was about 10 or 11 and we were in the car going somewhere and I antagonized her so much she slapped me across the face. And her diamond ring left a huge scratch under my eye. And for the next week, whenever friends or family or parents would say, what happened to your face? I would proudly say, my mother hit me. <laughs> and she would scowl in the background. <laughs> and so as I entered my teenage years, things went from bad to even worse. Um, out of my three brothers, I was always the one who was really awkward, who she could never quite understand. They were all preppy jocks, and I was in the throes of discovering a grunge and alternative rock, and I was fully in that world, and she just thought I was weird. I remember one time I dyed my hair this bright, weird, blonde, orange color, and she was running around the house chasing me with a thing of dye, yelling, let me just get the highlights out! <laughs> we disagreed about everything at this time. <laughs> She wanted me to look like a J. Crew catalog. I wanted to wear ripped jeans and concert t-shirts and flannel shirts. She wanted me to date Jews. I wanted to trade pictures of naked men on AOL chat rooms. <laughs> <laughs> she wanted me to join the United Synagogue Youth League. I wanted to pierce as much of my body as humanly possible. <laughs> And she wanted me to experience the wonders of Israel, and I was discovering the miracles of marijuana. <laughs> Not in a medicinal way. <laughs> so by the time I was 17 years old, we were barely talking. We would awkwardly pass each other in the kitchen. We had almost no relationship. And then one late night, I was flipping through the channels, and I happened to stumble on what was known as Skinamax back in the day, <laughs> which was in the channel Cinemax would take these terrible, almost soft, porn-esque movies and put them on TV. <laughs> And when I stopped on this channel, when I saw what was on TV, I grabbed a tape and I threw it in the VCR and hit record. Now, it's not what was on that had any sort of sexual quality for me. And I didn't have any idea what the plot was, or what any of the dialogue was, or who the character was. I'd never seen any of the actors. But all I knew was that this woman with gigantic breasts was seducing men and then smothering them to death in her clean. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> but the best was yet to come. The second part of the feature, starring Chesty Hawkins, was called Double Agent Jane. And the plot was this cutting edge spy had had these cameras implanted in her breasts. And so she was in somebody's office taking pictures, hoisting her watermelon sized boot over her arm at an awkward angle, <laughs> pressing the nipple, and you would hear crude shutter sounds. <laughs> Suddenly, a man interrupted her, and with dialogue, it didn't quite match up to his mouth. What are you doing? <laughs> Who let you in here? And then, cut to the greatest slow-mo shot of my life. Chesty whips around, her breasts slowly <laughs> guiding through the air, turning from cameras into giant orbs of destruction. <laughs> and she hits him on the side of the head, and he falls down. He goes to struggle in his feet again, but again, Chesty whips around, <laughs> pummeling him a second time, even harder, and he falls to the ground. He tries to get up a third time, and she whips around even faster, her breast landing the final death blow, and he does not get up again. And then suddenly, I heard a high-pitched sound behind me, and I whipped around. To my heart, to my terror, my mother was standing right there. I didn't know what to do, I didn't know what I could say, what sort of lie I could come up with. And then I listened, and she was laughing. <laughs> Hysterical. <laughs> Uncontrollable laughter. Her whole body shook. A tear was streaming down her face. That kind of infectious laughter that, that you can't help but be infected by. And so I started off... 
I started off gradually, and then I joined in, and we were both there laughing together. And we watched the rest of Double Agent Jane. <laughs> Sharing a bowl of popcorn, which would tumble out of our mouth when we were off to fight off a team of assassins. Everyone <laughs> removed it for developing. We would make terrible jokes like 007, prepare to meet Agent Double D. <laughs> and for the first time in my life, we weren't mother and son. We were two people who were sharing something, and everything kind of melted away. And we. We bonded for the first time, and, and gradually, over the year, teenage years, I would still hate her most of the time, but we still, we would have Chesty Hawkins. <laughs> <laughs> she would always be ours, and no one could ever take that away from us. And in that brief moment, a fleeting thought reached my underage, rebellious teenage mind. And I thought, you know what, maybe, just maybe, me and my mom, maybe we're not that different after all. Thanks. Good job.